Welcome back to Coding Shorts. My name is Sean Wildermuth. Today's topic has been requested quite a long time ago. I'm finally getting to it. I've been a little apprehensive because it's quite a long topic, so this video might actually be longer than my typical coding short. But you'll have to excuse me. Today we're going to talk about using Azure Entra ID, or used to be known Azure AD, to secure a SPA application and a backend API in .NET and, in my case, Vue, though all of the code that we're going to be talking about in Vue will work in most any JavaScript framework. Let's take a look. So where I want to start is really directly here in Visual Studio. I've got a API server I'm calling TestView, and then I have a testview.client, which is a JavaScript project that's working here inside of Visual Studio. None of this relies on Visual Studio. I just wanted one place where I can have my JavaScript and my C Sharp in one place, because we're going to need to deal with both of them. And just to show you what we're dealing with, I'm going to go ahead and run that project. And this is the project. Super, super simple. We've got a API that will return some data for us. And if you recognize this, you'll know that this is the sample API that's thrown into the brand new projects. And then I have a button for us to log in. And what I want to do is protect this data here from someone that's not logged in. Super simple idea. All of this is client side. There's no razor pages. It's just API, minimal APIs in the back end and view in the front end. So where I actually want to start is in the portal. In order to support all of this, I'm going to go down into app registrations, which is over here on the left hand side. I've got a couple samples here, but I'm going to create a new app registration for our app. I'm going to call this View Demo, for lack of a better name. And I can decide if I only want to support accounts in my Azure Entra ID tenant. And it gives you a couple of more options if you want to deal with multi-tenant. You can also choose only Microsoft accounts themselves to be logged in. But that's not my case. I want to be able to log in with my ID here in Azure Entry ID and use it. So I'm going to leave it there. And the redirect URI is saying what are legal places that once they've logged in that Azure can redirect their application to. And so you can actually pick here, and I'm going to pick SPA. And for now, I'm just going to use localhost 8080. So this way I can test on my local machine. You can add a handful of these. And eventually you'll want to point it at where your live servers are. But for now, that should get us what we want. So let's go ahead and click register. And now that we've got it registered, we're also going to need to expose an API. This is one of the ideas here that has been really confusing to me. But the idea behind this is to be able to have different roles or scopes, as they call them, to different parts of your API. And so to start this, I'm first going to set up an application ID URI, which for the most part, you can take what they have here. This is just a GUI that represents your app. And then it's going to start with API colon slash slash. And then I can go ahead and add a scope to that for some part of my applications. And in our case, I'm going to make sure that I call it our API. And I'm going to say that admins and users can both consent to using these. Read data, read data. These are going to be shown to the user. So you're going to want to use that. Read your files and allow. Again, these are all details that will be shown when someone logs in and wants to share their information with your application. So I'm going to go ahead and add that scope. And this gives us a few pieces of information we're going to need. But for our example, we have everything done in Azure we need to have. We need to have an app, which we're calling View Demo, and then we need to expose an API. So let's go back to Visual Studio, and we're going to need packages. So we're going to need .NET add package, Microsoft .identity web. Oh, yeah, I need to be in the right directory. Let's start that over, Sean. And over here, if I go into our test server folder, I can then say .NET 
add package Microsoft Identity Web. This is the package that's going to allow us to do this. And with that in place, we're going to want to set up some things in program.cs. Before we call build, I'm just going to say builder.services.add authentication. And I'm going to use JT bearer defaults, which we should be able to get from the using statement authentication JWT bearer. And this is just the name of the scheme for JWT bearer that we want to use. And then we're going to add Microsoft Web API. You'll notice there's a web app, might be a little hard to see here, or a web API. Because we're just exposing an API, we want to use API here. And we could configure this with an option, right? But it actually is a little easier if we said builder configuration get section. This will take a section that we have named, and I'm just going to call it enter in this case. You'll see a lot of demos that pointed at Azure AD instead, which because they've renamed it, I'm going to try to maintain what I need. So we're going to need a section inside the app settings for this. So let's create an enter section. And we're going to need a couple pieces of information. We're going to need the instance that Entra is going against. And in this case, that's just going to be login.microsoft.online. And then we're going to need a client ID and a tenant ID. If we go back to the portal, our application ID, which is our client ID, and our tenant ID are going to be right here. Now, you probably can't see what they actually are, but they're just GUIDs that you're going to need to copy and use. In our case, I actually have them in .env file so that you don't have to see them, but you would want to put them in your application in some way. And back in program, we're going to actually use our authentication. So first of all, before we make any of these calls to map get, let's go ahead and opt into use authentication. This will basically put in the middleware that we set up in the services for authentication. And then here for map get, I'm just going to say requires authorization. So I'm going to make this API no longer work unless someone is logged in. Make sense? So if we run this and we try to go to data, we won't get the data. In fact, what happens is in our network call, let's refresh that. This is returning a 401. And that's really the difference between the call to web app and web API is web app is going to redirect to some login page and web API is going to return 401 when we don't have it. We have this working in the way we want on the server. Now we need to configure it on the client. And the client is a little bit more involved, mostly because we have to support the actual login. Now this is important. We could do login directly by having a Razor page or something like that. But because a lot of front ends are using JavaScript to run directly in the browser, Microsoft has a JavaScript solution that will work with most JavaScript projects. And so if we come up here to our client, I shouldn't need to restart it because the client will rebuild it every time we need. We're going to need a couple of things here. So let's open up that terminal again, and I'm going to go down and then back up to the client. And here I want to install Azure slash MSAL browser. This is the browser implementation of MSAL, which is a library for accessing identity information. I'm just going to make sure it gets saved. Now that we have it, there's going to be a few things we need to do to make this work. And I'm going to create a new file here. I'm just going to call it auth.ts. I'm using TypeScript here, though. It could certainly be JavaScript. And I need to create a config object. This is just going to be a plain old object. And it's going to contain a property called auth that is also a complex object. And we're going to need to specify the client ID and the authority. Now we could copy in the client ID and the authority, which is typically the instance here, plus the tenant. Of course, we don't have either of those in here. And the reason we don't is I'm actually going to put them in my .env file. That way you don't have to necessarily see them. But here I can just say import meta environment dot vt client ID. And then I'm just going to copy and change this to be tenant ID. So we have a configuration object, but we now want to use that to set up our authorization. 
the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to export an object. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create an object that represents some data that we're going to want to deal with. And I'm going to contain the account itself, which is this account info from MSAL browser. Obviously, if you're using JavaScript, you don't need to be that descriptive. Then we need the instance object, which we'll see in a minute what that is. And it's a new public client application. We're going to also get that from the library, and we're just going to pass in our config object to get that. So it's taking this information to create this public application, or it's really an instance for our Azure Entra ID. And then we're also going to store the token, but we don't have the token yet, so we can leave it as empty. And then because we're in view, I'm going to export a quick function called use auth, and it's just going to return the data. Just as a pattern, this is something that you'll see in some frameworks called composables. Now that we've configured it in the way we want, though we're not really actually doing the work, we're just setting it up. I'm going to go over to our index.view, which has that page with the login here. And I'm just going to create a script section. This is where I'll actually set up what is happening here. And so we'll need to import use auth from, that's just using the data we have. And then we're going to need a function called login. This login is going to be tied, unsurprisingly, to actually do the login. In our case, we don't actually need this too because we don't have a separate page for it. And so this function is going to be the thing that actually pops open the login dialog. And we're making it async because there's a number of operations that have to happen that are asynchronous. So I'm going to wait for off dot instance dot dot initialize. I'm also going to wait for auth dot instance dot login pop up. Unsurprisingly, this is what's actually going to do the pop up it has to be initialized first. And when it's done, it'll have one or more accounts related to it. And I'm just going to use that auth dot MSL instance to get all accounts. This means that when the login pop up is shown, it will allow you to log in and this will get one or more of those accounts that you've allowed to be logged into this application. And we're just going to store the first one. So off that account is going to be my accounts. We could do some error handling in here, but let's keep it nice and tight so you can see what's happening. And once we have the accounts, we're going to want to get a response from off MSL instance again. And we're going to ask for the token. We're going to do this by saying acquire token silence. And this is going to need a couple pieces of information passed to it. First is the account. We also need scopes. Now, what is scopes? Scopes is going to be that API colon slash slash. And I'm going to use the client ID because that's what the scope is named. So I'll just say meta.env.vite client ID. And then I'm going to name it like we did before, our API. This should end up matching what is in the portal. And because this is scopes, we actually have to wrap it as if it were a, an array of one. And once that happens, we can simply say auth.token equals response dot access token. Of course, that's not going to quite work because we need our await there as well, because that's an asynchronous operation. So let's see if we can actually log in. We won't be able to use this information yet, but we're close. And so if we click on the login, we should get this magic website. It's going to allow us to log in. And because we asked for certain permissions, I can accept that the View Demo project wants this piece of information. And this is a really common area you get. I'm going to tell you I did it on purpose, but I didn't. It's trying to go to the same folder here, and it isn't an allowed URI because we actually use the 8080, which is the server address. If we go to our authentication folder, you'll see that we have this 8080 here. And I'm just going to replace this with the 5173. Let's go ahead and save that because this is what it's using to allow that only the websites you want to support this are going to support it. So let's try it one more time. Let's click to log in. Let's go to our sign in. And because it just returned, everything should be fine, right? So let's make a little change here to actually use this information. So in our index down here, let's go ahead and say auth.count. I think it's name. And I'm just going to use a vif to hide this. 
unless our auth.account exists. So before we log in, this won't be shown. And after we log in, we'll go ahead and hide that login button. So when we refresh, we're not logged in. Tell it to log in. Piece is actually using it. So let's go over to our data view. And you'll see that I'm actually using Axios to get this information from Weather Forecast. And what we really want to do is to import our auth object again. Again, because we're using it in the same way, we're getting that same auth that we used on the other page. And then what we really need to do here is pass in a helper object that's going to have headers. And what do you think we're going to have here? We're going to have authorization. And this will be bearer plus auth.token. So really all we're doing is ensuring that we have, when we make this call, that we're using the token to send back to the server, and the server is going to validate it, and hopefully this will work. So let's go home. We're not logged in, so let's go ahead and log in. So we should be able to hear log in. We're logged in. And now we're getting the values. And when we look at how this looks, go back to home and come back here, we'll see that it's using the bearer to get the access in. And if we look at the at the console where it's logging a bunch of information, you'll see that it's actually looking at this and saying, hey, the lifetime of that token is valid, and it's going ahead and executing that operation. So I'll certainly make this demo available. You'll see it below the like button in the comments if you want to download it. But there are some moving pieces here, and they can be a little confusing and might take a little work until you get really comfortable doing it. But the key pieces here are the Microsoft Identity Web, configuring your authentication and calling authorization down here, as well as using the MSAL browser to configure your authorization and then to be able to use it in a couple different places. So you'll see here in the index.view will be the login and in the data will be where we're actually using the authentication information to set up that bearer token header. Make sense? So this is one of the things I've started to become more and more comfortable with, and that is the idea that, so being able to use something like uh, Entra ID is, I think is really useful in handling authentication situations where I don't want to be really responsible for it. Uh, whether you use something like Auth0 or other third-party providers, or you want to use Azure's or AWS certainly has theirs. I like this idea of every application not having to rely on their developers to do all the work that's involved to secure this information. And so I think we're moving closer and closer to wanting that experience. The days of writing your own login pages and to store the information, to salt them correctly, and to make sure that you're doing validation correctly, like all of that, even though there's some built-in things into .NET 8 that really make that easier, I still don't love it that every application is going to have that data sitting somewhere in their, their data centers instead of someplace that is more secure. So I hope this has helped. If you have any questions or you get stuck, please make comments down below and I'll do my best to get you started. If you have code that doesn't seem to be working, go ahead and paste it in a comment and I'll really be able to see if I can help you get unstuck. Sometimes it just takes a second set of eyes to see that stuff. So until next time, I'm Sean Wildermuth. This has been Coding Shorts. Mm -hmm.